Today we're going to go through the practice questions for mean, median, and mode. So if you'll either pull up your practice questions or you can follow along on the screen here. Let's start with number one and it says if the amounts of rainfall in an area over a month are these, these values 1.7, 2.2, 0 0.5, 0 0.72, and 1.1. What is the mean amount of rainfall in the area for the month? So this is really a basic problem where we're finding the mean, and we've talked about that before in the previous videos that you can take a look at to look at how to calculate the mean. But basically what we're going to do, we're going to take these five numbers, we're going to sum them up, and then divide by five. You can do that on your calculator or by hand. So when we add those up, we're going to get a sum of 6.22. For like we said, these five numbers, we're going to take that, divide by five. When you divide by five on your calculator or if you need to do it by hand, 1.244. We look at our answer choices. We have to one decimal point. So we're going to go with the 1.2. Um, if you ever have to look at determining if you're going to round up, we're gonna, we would look at the number directly behind the 2, which is a 4, which is less than 5, so that means we do not round up. We keep the 1.2. So our answer is answer choice B, 1.2. Let's move on to question 2. It says if the mean of 6 numbers increased by 3, by how much would the sum of the six numbers have to increase? Okay, there's several different ways you can approach this problem. One thing I like to do is when they, they have given us, you know, th these, this information of the six numbers, increasing it by three and that sort of thing, but they haven't given us a particular example. So I'm going to make one up my own. Um, let's look at what they've given us. They say if the mean of six numbers increased by three, so right here, six numbers, when we're using the definition of mean, mean is equal to the sum of those numbers divided by however many numbers you have. In this case, we have six. So when I want to choose an example to use, I want to choose something that's divisible by six. So let's take a number, let's say 36. So if our sum is 36 divided by six, that is equal to 6. So we can correspond to each of these. That now means I have a mean of 6, a sum of 36 divided by 6. The question says is if the mean is increased by 3. So let's increase 6 by 3. That would make the new mean 9. We still have 6 numbers. That's our number we're dividing by. But now we, we need to know what this sum is right here, this x value. Through simple multiplication division, you should be able to know that x is equal to 54 because 54 divided by 6 is equal to 9. How much did we have to increase the sum from 36 to go to 54? So it turns out to just be a subtraction at this point and we get to be 18, which is one of our answer choices, J. Now by theory, what we can look at so that you understand this over here when we again we think of our definition our mean is increasing by three so we have a sum divided by six so when the question was how much did the sum have to increase by well if you'll look right here here's where we get our number when we increase by three it's really we're getting that 18 right here with three times six is equal to 18. That's the way that it's going to work. As long as you have valid examples over here, you can always work it with your own examples. Or using it by definition, it turns out to be 3 times 6. It turns out to be whatever number you're increasing or decreasing by. If it was decreasing, of course, you would have a negative multiplied by your denominator, the number of um, values you have in your data set. Okay, let's move on to question number three. If the mean of five numbers is 36, okay, I can already write something from this. Let's go ahead and look at the question. It says, what is the fifth number if four of the numbers are 27, 42, 43, and 35? So what we can do, we have five numbers and a mean. So we know the mean is 36. So we know that we can already write this out. Here's our sum. 
and we have four of the five numbers. We're looking for this fifth number. Well, we know our sum already is 27 plus 42 plus 43 plus 35 plus that fifth number. That's what we're looking for is an x value. We could figure that out. When we add these numbers, we get 147. So we already have a sum of 147. We could go ahead and plug this into our formula, our equation over here. We have 147 plus x, which is that fifth number, divided by 5. This is the definition of, of mean. Multiply both sides by 5. And I'm going to write this over here. We get 180 equals 147 plus x. So now we can do subtract 147 from both sides, and we're going to get x is equal to 33. That's the fifth value. So that is answer choice A. Let's take a look now at the fourth question. What is the median of the nine numbers? And then we, we're given a data set. Okay, so we're looking at median. Remember the definition of median is the middle value, the value in the middle position. We know we have nine numbers. They give us that. That is odd. So since we have an odd value, we can we, we have a distinct middle value, a position, middle position. So when you have nine values, the middle position is the fifth position. So we can look at ordering these numbers in the data set from one to five, and when we find that fifth position, that's going to be our median. I'm going to begin ordering from least to greatest. The smallest number is an 11. The next smallest would get a 15. And I put a little line under these. It helps me keep up with what I'm working with here. Then we're going to go to 19 and 19. We have two 19s. Make sure you list both of those. That's in the third and fourth position. And then the next number looks like it's going to be a 22. So I could continue on ordering these, but I already know from nine numbers, it's the fifth position I'm looking for, and that's going to be the value of 22, which is letter H. Okay, let's take a look at the last two questions on the next sheet. Here we're given a table that we're going to have to use to answer the last two questions. It says, Julie asked 15 people how many times a week they eat out for supper. The responses are summarized below. So we have this, these values in this table. Let's look at number five. Which interval contains the median of the data? So again, median, we're looking for the middle position, okay? We know that 15 people were questioned and their responses were summarized. So we're looking for the value of the median of 15 people. So 15 is odd. And we can find that middle position. We know that there's seven on one side, seven on the other. So the eighth position is going to be our median. So we're looking for that eighth position. So we'll use the table to find this eighth value. And we're going to use these number of responses here. So the first three go along with zero to one, seven more. So we add 3 plus 7, that's 10 total, come into the next values. So we have these seven values that are in the range of 2 to 3. We're looking for the eighth position. So the eighth position of the response is going to be here in this range right here, the 2 to 3, because we have 1, 2, 3, then 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, up to 10 here. So we're going to have... B right here, answer choice B. Let's take a look at question six. Which interval contains the mode of the data? So we're looking at mode this time. Mode is the value that occurs the most often. So again, we refer back to our table and we're going to look at the number of responses. We're looking for which interval had the most responses for that interval. And we see seven is the largest number. More people responded with this interval. So that's going to be our mode, interval two to three, which is answer choice G.